And we're thankful for what God's been teaching us about being a, becoming a Christ-centered church. And as you may have noticed, we've been talking about the five purposes of our church. And what we've been talking about is how, about worship. We've been talking about evangelism and discipleship. We've been talking about fellowship. And this morning we want to talk about service. We serve a, we serve a great God, don't we? We serve an awesome God that deserves our very best. So we're called, the title of this message is that we're called, we are called to serve. So that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. So I want, I'm going to share, my, share thoughts that uh, are from the scriptures. So we can get a, a, a perspective on what God is telling us about service. But I also want to, uh, to say that the, the topic is a very broad topic and we're going to focus on some particular aspects of service. But first of all, I want to talk to you briefly about why we're, we're to serve. First, first and foremost, we're called to serve because out of gratitude for all that, that God has done for us. It's our response of gratitude to God. It's also because he loves us with a great, the greatest love possible. And we're also we're commanded to love each other as God first loved us. First John 4 verse 19. It says, we love because God first loved us. If you ever want to know how you can have the power to love somebody else, remember that God loved you first. And when you forget that, then it becomes much harder to love somebody who, you, who it's hard to love. It says that God, the greatest love, that God demonstrated the greatest love possible. Jesus Christ, he says there's no greater love than that one lay, would lay down his life for his friends. And so we should keep that in mind. He has demonstrated that to us already. Each one of us in this place, he's died for each one of us. And in that sense, each one of us has been given the, the capacity to love our neighbor, to love our enemies, those who may despise who we are. We, we've not been given a spirit of fear. We've been given a spirit of love, of power, and a sound mind. That's what we've been given. We've been given eternal life. And God wants us to dwell with Him forever. So we are His, we are, we are His disciples. And He wants the whole world to know who He is. And so service is one way that we show the character of God to the world. Because God served us, He loved us first, so that's our opportunity to show God's example to the world. So to, I, I want to say that when we serve, we are to follow the pattern of Jesus Christ. And 
Because there are many people in the world around us that are doing a lot of good things. But that doesn't mean they're, they're doing it for Christ. Sometimes we too do good things, but then we forget why we're doing it. We're here to bring glory to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. That's why we serve. So we're not here to follow the world's example. We're here to follow the, the example of Christ. I want to look, let's look at Philippians chap chapter 2, verse 5. For the sake of time, we're, we're just going to look at a few of these verses and I, I'll just paraphrase. But Paul is speaking to the Philippians, telling them that they should have the mind of Christ. And that Christ, who is in very form, in very nature, God, he did not consider it he, his, his, he did not consider his own to be equal with God. But rather what he did is he humbled himself. He became a man. He became a servant. And, be, and it says that he humbled himself. He became obedient even to the, the point of death on the cross. Amen? Amen. So Jesus Christ has demonstrated what servanthood is, is about. It's about sharing in, in the nature and the character of God himself with those around us. Jesus also washed his, his, his disciples' feet. He not only died on the cross, but there are many ways that Jesus demonstrated what servanthood is about. And Jesus himself, he washed even the one, the feet of the one that would betray him. Jesus showed us what it, what, what God, what God does, even to those who do despise who He is. That's what the character of God is like, and that's what we're called to do. So when we, when we, are we willing to wash another's feet, even the enemies, of, the feet of our enemies, the people that we have some issues with in the church? That's the example Christ gave us. Do you think it's an option? It's not an option. Because it says that if you do not forgive your, your brother, neither will God forgive you. So this is a very serious issue. If you're not in that position, if you're not prepared to do that, then it's time to examine your heart. We're gonna get, well, I'm going to share a few more uh, points here. And we'll come back to this topic of what's in, the, what's in our hearts. Because what's in our heart it will come out. It will display itself as we, we live our lives. And that's where I want to focus most of this message, is on the heart. But I want to share a few topics, or a few brief points. To say, to, 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 to just share a few points on how God uses the pain that is in our life to call us to service. But when we have, when we have the, uh, one way that God calls us is through an injustice, something that we see in the world around us that's not right. There's a man that wrote a book 
called Holy. His name is Bill Hybels. He wrote a book called Holy Discontent. And when we see something in the world that we're not happy about, that that's what God's way many times of calling you to do something about it. It's not for me to tell somebody else to do it necessarily. But it's me that needs to do something about it. Maybe I don't have all the gifts and the talents required, but I, but I have a part, I have a piece of it. I, and I can bring other people together to address the thing that, that, I, that I'm seeing. So when we, we talk about service and finding our call, where we're going to serve, that's how we find our calling. Many, and um, I... One, one, I don't, I'm not going to get real deep into this because we have some other things we're going to talk about, but this is for your for perspective. But, for example, Moses. Did he see a need? He saw the children of Israel under the domination of the, of, of the Egyptians. And God called him to do something about it. He started off maybe in the not in the correct way. He killed an Egyptian. But but he was he had the right he had an idea that he had to do something about that. And years later, God brought him back. To, to address that, that issue. So that's how we find our calling many times. That's how God calls us. And when we find the place that we feel that God is called, when we understand that God is calling us to serve, then, he, then we're supposed to get more involved. We're supposed to it's like uh, it's it's a, you have to feed that that passion that's growing within you. To and, you, and to do that, you have to get closer to the problem. You can't stay a distance away. But you've got to get close so that it actually affects who you are. It affects your heart. If you want to do something about the, the youth in your church, maybe it's about time that we get closer to them and understand and listen to what they're saying. It's, it's, stop, it's time to stop complaining about it and doing something about it. If you're not happy with the way the worship team in your, in your church is functioning, Get closer to it. Maybe get involved. If your church isn't doing evangelism, maybe it's your time to take the step forward and lead and get close to to others that are also doing evangelism and bringing others to come with you. And then when, we, when we've gotten close to it, we've got to fight for it. We can't stop. We've got to keep going forward and not give up. Okay? So that's just a few points I want to say about how God helps us find our, our area of service. And I want to maybe share just a couple. So I want to say that when it comes to service, we need others around us sometimes to show us how to do things. We need mentors. We need people with experience. And we need to be willing to listen. We talked just we talked about being faithful, available, and teachable. And we need to be teachable. 
And that, and that takes a humility within each one of us to be able to listen to what other people are telling us. So what God can use the, the, the pain or the thing that we see in the world that's not right, He can use that to call us. But He can also, but he can also use that pain that we're feeling to shape our hearts. And, and really, when you think about it, pain is really what creates a true servant. Even, even Jesus Christ had to come to the earth to become a man, to, and, and that's how he could understand the needs that were there. And I should say in a, in a more personal way, just like you and me experienced the things that we experience in life. He came here to, to experience that. So God is shaping our hearts through the things we experience to make us more committed servants to Him. And I think that what we see in the Scriptures as well is that it's more important to God what's in your heart, really, than what you do for Him. It says that God desires obedience more than, sacri than sacrifice. We can do everything, all these, we can do a lot of good things, but if it's not what God asks us to do, it, it, it's, not, it's not what he's looking for. So how we serve and how we live is more important than what we do. God doesn't look at the outward appearance. He doesn't look at everything that you're doing. He's more concerned about what's going on inside of you. If we don't serve and we do it, if we if we do serve and we do it with the right heart, uh, we are not. Uh, we are doing what God is, at, he's, that's what he's looking for. But if we're doing good things, but for the wrong reasons, then God is, is not satisfied with that. What he, he doesn't want us doing good works for our own self-glory. It's not good enough to do enough good works so that I feel better about myself. Or to do enough good things so that God will accept me into his eternal kingdom. I can't earn my way into the kingdom of God. I have to receive the grace of God. And then let that change my heart so that I can go and do the work that he has called me to do. God is looking for those who are interested in his glory, not their own. And he's looking for people who are willing to pay the price. Those who are willing to go through the pain and the suffering to achieve the goal that God has. Through that process, God is shaping our hearts. So we need, to, in order to do the great things that God is calling us to do, our hearts have to be prepared. It's a, it's a process that God is taking us through. And so when we talk about having a heart that's prepared, we're talking about a heart that has been willing to go through the process. 
Because your heart has to be prepared to do the thing that God has prepared for you in the future to do. If you're not willing to pay the price now, you're not going to be able to pay the price later. So that's why it's, a, it's it, the, when we talk about service, we're talking about the heart. So, when we when, so in a sense, this we want if you want to give it a visual example, it's. It's like we're all going to school. We're all in the classroom of life. So God is looking for people who are willing to go through his school. Going through the school of pain and suffering and brokenness. And those who are willing to pay that price, they will come out on the other side with a heart that's been formed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Why are there so few people who are prepared to lead God's people? Because they haven't been willing to pay the price. They may think that they've paid the price, but when the when the time comes, they're not they're not able to stand up under the pressure. But that's where we thank God for His grace. Because even through that process, He is going to work with us. If we allow him to do that, if we think we've got it all figured out, we are we are cutting ourselves off from what God may be trying to tell us. So, I wanted to. This I think is very important to what we see happening in our churches today. In whatever country you're coming from. Because you see people who are acting in different ways. And maybe there, you, we talked earlier this week about the generational gap. What I want to, what I want to say is that God is forming you through the, what you're going through right now. And it takes a certain mindset to go through what you're going through right now. If you're a young person and you feel like nobody's listening, nobody's giving you any opportunities, realize that God is using that to form who you are right now. Don't don't walk away from what God's trying to do in your life. If you give up now, you're not going to be ready for what he has for you later. When I was a young person, I decided I was not going to walk away from this church. I believe that God has a special purpose for our church. To take the good news to the whole world and take the unique message that we have to those who have yet to know about it. And, and as I've been able to visit various countries over the last few years, people are looking for a church like ours that has the teachings of Scripture that are based on, on Scripture. But we got to let God complete the work in us. And when He lets, when He complete, and he, when He's doing the work with us, He's preparing us for what He wants us to do to take it to the rest of the world. So it's a process. And sometimes you've got to wait quite a while until your opportunity comes. But that's God's way of testing what's in your heart. And, and that doesn't mean that you don't do anything now to try to, to, to move into what God is calling you to do. That, this is the time. But do it God's way, not your own way. 
And the, one of the best the ways that to, to do that is to find a, where, a place to serve where you see a need and you can step into that situation and assist those who are already trying to, to, do, to, to serve within the church. Jesus said that to be the greatest in the kingdom of God, you have to be the servant of all. And this is a difficult this is a this is a difficult thing for many of us because sometimes we don't understand how how we're supposed to do it. And sometimes our emotions, sometimes our that our thinking is not right, and that's what God's trying to shape and mold. As I said, I've lived, I've lived, I grew up in the Church of God Seventh Day. And, and I've seen enough to say that this, this for me, when I, when I talk about the heart, this has the potential to make or break. The, the church itself. And that's what God's looking for. He's looking for people who have the right heart, the right mindset, and they're ready to do His will. We're created, it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that we're created for good works. And that's in response to what we receive from God through His grace. And when I, and when I talk about grace, I'm talking about the, the gift, the free gift that God has given us. If anybody is confused on what grace means, read Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 8 and 9. And even that section that's talking about the grace of God. Because God has so much for us and He's ready to give it to us. It's a matter of whether we're willing to receive it. So everybody has a gift and a talent God has given them. At least one. But sometimes we see people are using their gifts. They're very talented people. But they're not using that gift in the right way. And so instead, they're using that to, 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 to maybe hurt other people or, or, or just, un, just a number of things that they might do, but it's not being used properly. And that's why the issue of the heart is so important. When God can change and transform our hearts, and we're allowing Him to use the, the, the pain and the suffering that we go through in life, to shape our hearts. Then he will teach us how to use our gifts in, with the right attitude and the right motivation. And I want, but it's also important to realize that it's not always the other person that's the problem. It might be me that's the problem. Now, I have to rec recognize that God needs to do more work in me and not necessarily point the finger at the other person. We're all on a journey that God is taking us through. And there's a verse in scripture that talks about being made perfect through suffering. Amen? Amen. So what we're talking about is countercultural. This is not what we see in the world around us. This is, the world is more focused on what I can get out of the situation. But what God is telling us is that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. 
And that's where we need to be as, 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 as followers of Christ. I want to use an example. It's uh, based on a book that I read a few years ago. It's talking about, it, it brings out some interesting um, points on the, on, the, on the relationship between three kings. And these three kings are, the, uh, the first two are the first two kings of Israel. And we're talking about Saul. And we're talking about King David. And also, in this example, we're, we're going to briefly look at the son of David. This, this, this son, Absalom. Because we think we, what, what we see here is a great example of, of what is going on in the heart. Saul. He was anointed to be God, or he was anointed by God to be Israel's king. He was the epitome of greatness. He stood a head taller than everybody else. He united the kingdom of Israel. The Spirit of God came down on him, and he, did, he, he prophesied, and he did other things that God commanded him to do that, that were great. He was chosen by God, but deep down inside, he was eaten, he was suffering from jealousy. He was dwelling in spiritual darkness. And hit it, hit, and um, and and just just to think about this. Many times when people are seeking power, when they're seeking hidden deep inside, are things like ambition, craving for fame, and that's because there there's there's something missing inside, and they're trying to use that as a way to fill that empty space within. But the but the heart that's been formed, that's the heart where God is dwelling. In that, in the, in the, in that person is able to serve in a way that is not for for themselves. God gives sometimes, even in the church, and that's what we're what we're talking about as a Christ-centered church. Sometimes He gives people who are not yet prepared or, or maybe unworthy. To, to take the responsibility they've been given. But he does that so that what's within them can be, can be exposed, that their heart can be dealt with. Any situation where, that a person is in, even if it's myself and I'm not, or yourself, and you're in that position, and you find yourself... In a, in a place where you're, you're, you're doing it for the wrong motivation. That's, God's, that's the perfect opportunity for God to come in and start working in your life. And so what the world is waiting for, what the world is looking for, is leaders who are humble, who have been broken by the pain and the suffering that they've gone through. It's less important that you have the gift. It's more important that you are a, a vessel that God can use for His purpose. And so, any one of us who thinks maybe maybe we're not qualified, maybe we don't have what it takes. What we need first and foremost is to have a heart that God can use, that God has shaped, and He can He can use for His purposes. Amen. Amen. 
Ah, you must tell us your best idea, sir. No, I don't know what you mean. Who? What's the? Who is David? Why any David? David. He was the youngest of eight children in his father's family. He was the shepherd of sheep. But he also was called by God. Just like Saul was. He was anointed to be God, to be the king of Israel. But the but his process was different. Well, the process is the same, but the circumstances were different. But he was somebody who was willing to live a life of submission. He, he was somebody that was willing to be patient. He knew that God had, had anointed him. But he did not try to take what, what God had given to, 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 to Saul. He knew that God called him. But he did not do that because he trusted that God was going to make it happen in his time, in his way. Amen. So sometimes when we're in a situation where we feel like maybe the person who is above us is not doing what we would expect. But if we have a sense maybe that God is calling us to maybe take or, or do that work in the future, it's not our place to try to take that for ourselves. Rather, it's, it's God's timing and He will let you know when that time comes. Amen. So, when we talk about ser being a servant, it's about humbling ourselves. It's about lowering ourselves. It's about forgetting about myself and making God's agenda the priority, which His agenda is to form my heart. To prepare me for what he has for me to do in the future. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, that is the secret to greatness. At least, at least one of the secrets. To allow God to shape your heart. So that when the time comes, you're ready. And, and, he can, and God can tap you and put you where he wants you to be. But that's the way God wants it to be. He doesn't want us stepping ahead of him. What, what do we do when we feel like the person who may be uh, in leadership above us. What do, we, what do we do when we start seeing the spears coming at us, just like David? What we have to do is we have to, we have to, make, we have to put our trust in God. We have to be not letting the, we, we can let the spears that they're being thrown, we can let those uh, uh, touch, they, they can penetrate us. But we don't have to let those things hurt, uh, penetrate or change who we are. Because keep in mind, God is forming your heart through the pain that you're going through. And those are some, those are the ways that we find that God brings us closer to Himself. We don't we so through the suffering our connection with the Lord Jesus Christ becomes very strong. We also don't when we receive when we're being when those spears are being thrown at us. We don't want to let those spears we don't want to return. We don't want to throw the spears back. 
Otherwise, we're playing the same game. That's not the example of Jesus Christ, is it? The example of Jesus Christ was to go to the cross. And if God wanted to save him, he would have sent his angels to take him off that cross. But that was God's plan for, for his son Jesus Christ. So that's the example that we need to follow. Even when we have somebody above us who is not following the example of Christ. Amen? Amen. So God is looking... Even, even within each one of us, we have the characteristics of Saul, the ki of King Saul. But that's what God is trying to take out of us. And he wants to put the character of his son, Jesus Christ, within. And when we're able to let God use those things that we're experiencing to shape us, God will replace our old character with the new. Amen. So the reason why we are under, under people that sometimes we're not, we don't agree with, or we're not in uh, exactly unity with, or we're not under, on the same under, with the under, same understanding. It's because God wants to use that to take out the things within you that need to be destroyed and replaced with what is, what, what is good. So, it's like each one of us in our lives, we're always going through what you might call a, a surgery. And when we allow ourselves to go through the surgery, God can make us into the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. And what we, and what we see with King David is that he, was, he allowed himself to be that surgery to take place. He was, he was beaten and he was broken. And he, and when that happens, and when he's, he comes to the end of himself, that's where he finds God himself. So you might ask, what happens when we're, we're living in this situation? When do we, when, if and when do we leave? following the person that God has put in place. It's, a, it's when, it's not, your, it's not you making this decision, it's the person above you sometimes that will make that decision for you. In the case of David, when, when Saul made the decision to, to, to when he decided to, when he was, when he made the decision to kill David, that was the time David left. But until that time, David stayed in the situation. He was willing to go through that suffering. And we need to understand from God Himself when that time is, when it might be time to leave. But. Remember, God is putting you there for a very specific purpose. For yourself, for your heart to be changed. And also because maybe he wants you to be the one that makes a difference. In but at the right time. In the right way. Not by trying to take something that doesn't belong to you. When we have the, the opportunity to, 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 to remove the Lord's anointed. 
When we're, we're in a situation where we are we're struggling, but we have an opportunity to maybe do something about that. Think about the situation where David had the opportunity to kill Saul. He had the he, King Saul was in a cave. And David had the and, and David, what did he do? He went into the cave, he cut a piece of the robe off of Saul. But he had the opportunity at that moment to, to, to destroy Saul. But he didn't do it, did he? He understood that God had a greater purpose. He understood that God had a timeline that he was working on. He knew that God had put him there. We should never forget that when God puts people in position, that he that this is the man that God has put there. But God in his way, he will make the any changes that might be needed there. And when you do this, when you're patient and you wait upon God, you become a trust you become a trustworthy servant. And, that, and that's what God's looking for. If you try to take what's not yours, what are you going to do when you become the one in charge? You're going to... You're going to create an environment where you are also encouraging the same thing to happen. And you're going to be the one that's starting to throw the spears because people are trying to attack you. So it's very important, the process. Because as you go through that process God will give you the position that you are are you you are ready for So while we're in that position of of being molded in, in God's time and in his way there's not much that we can do with maybe the person that we are working that is above us but God is working in you. Let's talk just for a couple minutes about Absalom. Absalom was the son of David. And what did he do? He was a, he was a very well he was a very handsome man. He was somebody that the that the the went out to listen to the people. He stole the hearts of Israel. And what did David do? What did David do when Absalom tried to take the kingdom? David did not resist. David because he knew that if God wanted him to stay in that position, God would make it, he would protect him and make it happen. Amen. Okay, but Absalom, he was following the pattern of Saul. So when we are the leader, and people try to take our position, we need to put our, we need to trust God. And when those, and we're not to be somebody who's throwing spears. There's a way to do that. There's a way to work through those issues. And God will show you how to do that. In a, in a, in a way that demonstrates the character of Christ. And I think we can see some of that in David himself. Because even Christ himself knew that his father could come and rescue him from the cross, but he didn't, but trusted his father that what was happening was the father's will. The interesting thing is that when you try, when you, when you don't try to hold on to your position, 
People are more interested to follow somebody like that. But when you're trying everything in your power to hold on to the power you have, you're more likely to lose that, that position, that power. Because, because people don't want to follow somebody like that. You, as when we, in each one of us, when we become a leader, we are there because people see what's in our heart. They follow us because they see what God is doing in us. It's not because I'm, I'm, I'm telling people what to do. It's not my, you know, people, when, I'm a ser when I serve, other people are willing to serve me as well. That's the example of Christ. But when I start commanding people and telling them what to do, with lacking the heart of a servant, people are begin to walk away. And I think that even if I can expand this a little more, even to one of the other uh, sons of David. Well, I shouldn't say the son of David, the son of Solomon. Rehoboam. What did he do? He was not ready to serve the people. He was ready to tell people what to do. And what happened? The kingdom divided. And that's not what, what God, that's not God, that's not, that's not God's pattern that's not his design and so we need to be looking carefully at these things and we have to we have to realize what God is doing and how he works and so I want to, to bring this to a, to, to a close and I'm going to share a few thoughts and I'm going to invite uh, my brother Wade Rose to come forward to share a few additional thoughts on this subject. On, this, on the subject of service. But I want to say that we need to look inside of ourselves. We need to ask ourselves, are we following the pattern of Saul? Or, or are we following the pattern of David? If you're a leader, do you feel threatened? When people start to, to criticize or, or people start to think maybe they could do a better job or maybe you're jealous like Saul was when he saw how well David was doing. Are you finding yourselves throwing spears? Then maybe those are some indications that you're following the example of Saul. Are you secure in who you are and your calling? trusting the Lord to help you to respond correctly and, and with humility like David are you trying to take the authority of others like Absalom telling people you are Telling others that you might do a better job than the guy that's in that position? When you might be, when that, that is also a sign of, of the example of Saul? Too, too many people want to be king. But first, it begins with being a servant. And a real king, a true king, is a servant. Beginning to the end. It doesn't matter if you're king. It doesn't, you, you're always going to be a servant. And in that sense, when you are a servant and you let God prepare your heart through the process that he's taking you through, and your confidence in God is growing, 
That's how God will elevate you to a position of influence in the proper way. But if we try to do it by other means, we try to take it from somebody, your, your position will not last long. And we need to, and so as leaders, and even as as fellow lay brother and, and fellow brethren, this is these are the things we need to realize. One last one last point. We have we each one of us. We have to understand the love of God. We've quoted the verse that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but He's given us a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. And when we're operating in that kind of a spirit, God's going to do everything in our life for us. But when we're living in fear, we're trying to hold on to what we have. Even what we have, we're going to lose. It says, in, and this is also quoted, 1 John 4, 19. We love others because God first loved us. And when we don't understand the love of God, there's a there's a hole in our in our inside of us. And we seek different ways to fill that hole within. And there's and, and just just understand all of us have that to a certain degree. Because, because God is trying to teach us more about the love he has for us. So when we find ourselves doing things that are that that uh, compensate or are, we are doing to help us feel better about ourselves or or for our own glory that's a sign that we need to get back and to understand the love God has for us. Because sometimes the most successful people we see in our world are the very ones who, who, who lack the understanding of how much God loves them because they're trying to do so many things so that they can feel that their self-worth is... is, 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 is they have a better sense of their self-worth through the things that they do rather than from God. And when we look at Saul, for example, God, what, what, what happened? God departed from Saul. And so he was separated from, from God. And that's where he became afraid. That's when he started to throw the spears. And, and he did. He tried to kill David, a man that was doing so many things for him. And so we've we have this. So when we have when we understand the love of God, what it does is it help, it frees us from what other people the opinions of other people. I, I'm able, I can listen to what people are saying, but I don't have to let that determine how I think or feel about myself. In other words, I'm secure in my identity in Christ. It frees me to be able to serve from a pure heart. And so, and Jesus knows where we're coming from, and where what, 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 what I'm trying to say is that Jesus Himself knew where He came from, and He knew where He was going. Jesus knew that His Father loved Him. We hear in the Scriptures God's the Father speaking to His Son. This is my Son, whom I love. This is in whom I am well pleased. And this is what gives us the power to love even our enemies. Because we're full with the love of God. If you see yourself without the heart to serve, 
You might have a love problem. You, you may not be fully understanding the love God has for you. Because if you did, you might be loving that person that you're struggling to love right now. So if we're serving, then we, we have to look at why we are serving. It's, it is it is selfless. With the love of God, we can forget about ourselves. We know where we're going. We know we're going to, to see the Lord Jesus Christ in the kingdom of in his coming kingdom. We don't have to be here right now. But God has left us here for a purpose. So that other people can see his character. And come to know who he is. God is looking for pure servants. Servants with a pure heart and a pure mind. And he's going to take you through the process just like he did David so that all the imperfections that are within you, he's going to start taking those out of you one by one through the situations you're facing. So that's the school that we're going through. This is, this is how God is teaching us how to be servants. This is how God is teaching us to be leaders. And God is so and God is looking and He's preparing those of us. Who are ready to do that to do his his work and put us in positions of influence that can make a difference for his kingdom so let's be a people let's be a people that follows the example of Jesus Christ and that of of King David and to leave the pattern of this world Leave the pattern of Saul. Leave the example of Absalom. Let's leave those behind. And let's run the race that God has set for us. And be willing to run that race no matter the cost. No matter the price that God is asking of us to pay. Because Jesus himself, he was willing to lay down his life. And that's what we have to be willing to do is be willing to, to go to the point of laying down our life to follow the path that God has prepared. I want to give uh, my brother Wade Rose an opportunity to share a few additional thoughts. But I, I pray and I trust that God has spoken to you this morning through these, I, I believe, very critical points for us as, as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. May God bless you all. Amen. Amen.